good. All right, I got a uh, shoulder workout here today. My boy Tom's going to join me for the shouldering. Gonna move into trying to bend the elbows a little bit more, doing these guys. Are we getting a shoulder pump or a tricep pump to the shoulders? It's part of being jacked. Really try to squeeze these up. Mixing in some uh, front raises in between. These are called triads, made by a company called Havoc. And I believe he made a great design where you can use different weight on there, like that weird adjustable dumbbell set. That's that weird giant square that you see a lot of people have. I've yet to purchase it. I need to, I need to get, get on there. Uh, a really good friend of mine um, has been, uh, Derek, his name is, he's been selling these for several years now he's got he's got really innovative products uh, when I started coming out with products he, he really liked and admired um, the innovation of some of the stuff that we were putting out at the time and he was like the world doesn't need another easy curl bar you know he's like the world doesn't need another tricep rope he's like let's make stuff that's fun that's innovative that's different and this is different look at that look how fat that thing is so you can do some fibers carries with this guy then you can switch to this guy then you switch to this guy in a superset. Obviously, you can do curls, presses, treat it like a kettlebell. You can do some swings. You can swing it. You can have some fun with it. You can catch it, which is a little difficult. Whoa, especially on that fatter one. It gets to be pretty tough. You can do like front raises. I mean, anything you can think of, you can do with this thing. This thing also fits on a barbell. So if you wanted to slide this on a barbell, you could, I mean, if you have a garage gym, and you don't have tons and tons of space for a lot of stuff, I think this is a great product. Obviously the kettlebell swing type of thing is fantastic. I really love the design of them. I like them a lot better than a kettlebell to be honest with you. The kettlebell always seems to hit my wrist. For whatever reason, the angle of this feels really clean. And I like this upward and backward motion, especially on this shoulder. I just have shitty uh, range of motion, but I really like the way that that feels. It's hard to really describe but having your hand like inside of this creates some different leverages and it's just a different way to curl. You guys see Tom working out in street clothes, <laughs> but those are Lululemon like jean pants, right? Yeah, they like you Show can do- Show ass, Tom. Just, uh, oh, oh, oh. What, what the? Yeah, I'm gonna be on wow. Lululemon billboards in no time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Penis pants, it's about time. Remember, I tell you guys all the time, don't be afraid to do things a little different. You know, you do your front raises, the traditional front raises. A lot of times people do them like kind of one arm at a time. And they bring it across the face so that they move the shoulder like this. I was just doing these a little different out and up over here. One way is not necessarily better than the other. They're just different. Whew. One thing is with... Doing the front raise where you um, pull your arm kind of in. Put this guy down. You can get some good activation in the shoulder right here by twisting and going right in front of your face. At least that's what I feel because you're trying to you're trying to really target right in here a big old muscle that pops up when we go to raise our arm up. This guy here is what we're trying to get. And so this guy, you can see, doesn't get activated by this. Side motion, it's a little bit, right? But this way is where it starts to get really activated. See how it gets gnarly and veiny in there? And then if we go to pose, watch this guy pop up right now. If we go to pose, boom, it starts to pop up right here. 
and uh nobody has that muscle dialed in better than our boy the natty professor he's got some outstanding shoulders on him. i mean he's got fucking outstanding everything Stay on top of that pump, try to find the range of motion that's getting the muscle the most. Fucking ride it out. I'm excited coming up. I'm going to get in shape. <laughs> Doing some of these one arm, you might want to try to stay on the same side for some reps. Really see if you can get it zapped out. You know, a lot of these movements are pretty small and uh, the amount of weights that we use are not very heavy so really try to learn them take the opportunity to learn how the lift feels maybe just go real slow grab real light weight and just move it Really slow way, and then what you'll see is I don't even need these tens at this point. What you'll see is maybe the range of motion you're moving in is actually like a little bit excessive. Maybe you only need to go to here and to here, like this, because when I come down all the way, I'm losing tension. So might be better off staying on tension. Keeping that shoulder muscle, see how the muscles popped up the whole time? Keep it there, keep that tension. Insane how horrible a little tiny weight can kill you. Yeah, quite a bit, right? Considerable amount, yeah. Yeah. Trying to, get, trying to get these guys to pop right here. Let's show you guys how easy some of this stuff can be. So, I'm showing you like that. Let's just take a weight. And let's just see. I've never even tried this exercise before, but something a little different actually might feel better one arm at a time. Oh my God. There's like no strength there at all. I have zero power there, just found out. <sighs> Try the fives, dude. That was torturous. Is this what you're doing? Yep. Let's have you go, just stay on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Go up a little higher. 
and come down a little less. Right there, maybe bend the arm a tiny bit more. Yep. Turn a little bit to the side so you can see your shoulder moving. Keep pushing that shoulder up. Look at the shoulder in the mirror. Turn a little bit more that way. Yep, because we're getting right here. See it? Yep. Don't come down this far. I know it's getting, <laughs> I know your arms are falling down. That's what we're getting right there. Good, switch to the other arm. <laughs> Guys, how simple is this? You, f you find what moves a muscle around and you see it, then you use the mirror to your advantage. This is how you use a mirror right here. The mirrors aren't so you just go and check out how buff you are compared to everybody else. I mean, that's fun and that's what we think they're for, but this is what it's really for right here. Figure out how to work the muscle, better mind muscle connection. I think this would be better with a cable, huh? Wanna try that with a cable? Yeah, let's do, let's do it. that. I've been lifting for about 14,000 years, and uh, you guys are seeing firsthand, like making this shit up on the fly as we go. Grab the uh, 15s too, please. Figure out what you angle. See the fibers like really kicking in, especially right there. I'm trying to figure out what angle feels best. Drop set. Down to ten. Shoulders are melting. I'm trying to go thumb up more. It feels better to pull in. Hard to tell what's better. Wonder, I wonder. That works pretty good too. It's all experimentation. Stay on that shoulder. So when you do your main exercise, you do your main movements, you do your big movements, you do your OHPs, your overhead pressing, that's where you start to try to target everything. Works your whole body, especially if you do standing overhead presses. This is targeted more. Holy shit. A lot more isolation. I'm trying to get inside of this muscle right here. I'm trying to dive inside there. You have a couple compartments of your shoulder, but the one that you're gonna be able to build up, probably the biggest would be this front part. Secondarily, usually the side. Um, we were getting the side dealt more when we were doing our lateral raises. Uh, we might target them a little bit more to finish up the workout. But we're gonna end our workout out with some overhead pressing because my elbow has been a little weird. Uh, taking those main movements and putting them towards the end of the workout where I'm forced to use less weight. a tough movement it's one of those ones you don't always feel that good so you're gonna have to play around with it a lot play around with how you have your hands 
Some people like to use cables on this instead. We'll actually show you what that looks like. I'll show, I'll show you now after he's done. Pull that other one down, Tom. Try to get a good stretch. Let these go this way and come up. You want to try or you want to make sure your upper body is not moving a ton. We don't want to be going like this, although you could, and you still be getting shoulder activation, but for this, try to stay in here more. Pull it apart. Pull it apart. It's harder to keep your hands higher on this. Once you get tired, start to go for it. One. That was a tough movement right there. Ooh, get your money's worth on that one. So, as I'm going through this workout, getting some compliments from the team, from our squad, Carlos, who's with me every day behind the camera right now, saying I look bigger than normal. That's what happens when you work your ass off. Work really hard for a long period of time and then you just take a little break from your diet because we can't try to be bigger we can't try to be more ripped we can't try to be more shredded we can't try to be more jacked we can't try to be more tan you got to just be you got to just become and you got to become one with the diet and the environment that you're trying to build and what you're trying to make that's how it works That's why I'm so obsessed with this shit. That's why I love it so much. It's a really difficult thing to master and you'll never truly master any of it. The best thing the best way I can compare this, and here the thing I'm crazy. The best way I can compare this is, is that you, when it comes to sex, you can't try to have a boner. You're either excited about the process that's about to happen, or you're not. And there could be physiological reasons, there could be uh, hormonal reasons, there could be a lot of reasons behind it. But men, you know what I'm talking about. You may have the desire to want to do it. You may want to try to do it, but it's not about trying. It just has to be. There needs to be a, a subset of circumstances that are set and that are good to go for you to be good for you to be good to go. Subset of circumstances set. Well. Yep. Try not. Just do. Nice. You might have like the freakiest front delts on this one. A lot of benching. All that benching, yeah. Um, don't give in to like conventional stuff by other people. You know, just remember what I talk about a lot. I'm actually in the middle of, or in the beginning of writing a book called fuck what you heard because I've heard a lot of stuff from a lot of people and a lot of it's been bullshit these are this is like a lateral raise but what happens when I bring it more to the front I'm getting a lot of activation here too I'm just learning a lot of the stuff that I learned I've had to spend so much time and you could even say waste a lot of time unlearning it. That's why I'm trying to teach you guys firsthand right off the bat on the things that I think that you can do to be more productive and to be more betterist so you can get it right right from the get-go. You know a lot of people um, say that they want to train with me um, and for a long time the gym has been free and uh, I've had the gym for a long time. The location of the gym is not a secret. It's online. I'm here quite a bit training. 
Um, and I've trained with four or five people maybe over the course of like 10 years that have kind of come in off the street that just kind of hit up Super Training Gym on Instagram and kind of found our email and found their way into like our hearts basically. But you can figure it out. You can find a way to come here and train with me. We have some weird uh, restrictions going on right now, but I'm around. I'm in here training pretty much every Saturday and Sunday for sure, somewhere between 9 and 12 o'clock, 855 Riverside Parkway, West Sacramento, California. People think they want to train with me, but then sometimes they come in here and they do, <laughs> and they find out it's pretty tough. So open invite, that's for anybody. You just have to figure out a way to contact us. Can you drop that down for me? Yeah. Your traps are fucking oh. up too. Trap game? Trap. I'm trying to trap you. I'm trying to trap you, Tom. Tom, what's the difference between training by yourself and getting one in here with me? Man, well, not only just with Mark, but just having a partner to go back and forth with is awesome. Uh, I don't think I've ever lifted with Mark where he's like, oh, we're going to break for 30 seconds or say, he goes and then I go and then he goes and it's pretty non-stop and uh, I never ask like, oh, what exercises are we doing? Because sometimes Mark will go on a whim and there's never a really short workout. Like, and he'll uh, trick you. He'll be like, hey, you want to hit some shoulders? And you're like, yeah, let's do shoulders. And then all of a sudden you're squatting or all of a sudden you're ready to throw up from a shoulder workout. And you're like, I thought shoulders were supposed to be easier, or more fun. You know, we've talked about like some reason arm workouts, like you get all excited. And they're always the worst fucking workouts with Mark. By the time you're done, you can't move your arms. You want to throw up. But there's just a level of intensity to it. Um, and, like, Mark definitely holds you accountable and I think expects you to hold him accountable to, like, push through the sets. Yeah, I don't want you to respect me and to try to lift less weight than me. Or I want you to push it. You know, if I do 100 pounds on something, I love it. You know, when somebody else I'm training with takes the pin, they put more weight on there. Or they throw another 25 on each side. It's great. And then I'm like, oh, shit, all right, well. And we went right. It was nice. Like, yeah. I wasn't going to, like, sprint slower. Yeah. You know, Mark's out 100 pounds on me, and he mm -hmm. was still fucking sprinting his ass off. Yeah. And it's like, there's no way when I bench I can even get close. But, like, when I run, I can I can keep up with Mark and, yep. and feel like I'm helping push him a bit more. <sighs> Back's looking good. Really good. So people get all concerned about some of these other muscles working. Don't sweat it, man. Let them all work. People are like, you're only hitting your traps. So what? Awesome. What's wrong with having big traps? I think it'd be the, great. I mean, the first few times I worked out with you, come flying in from Cleveland on red eyes, oh, yeah. Jay and I would come, I've thrown up multiple times. How about this hat? Do more, be more. Hat's sick. This is the hottest hat on the streets right now. You can do them this way with your hands this way. You can even try to turn your hands that way, which is really hard. You could turn your hands this way. Turn them out again, Mark. The way you just had them. Uh, where you, you turned them all the way in. That's hitting, I feel like you're dealt more. Right. It feels tough, that's for sure. You can see it. Hey. Worry about reps. I mean, are you aware of how many reps you did? No, I was gonna say like select a weight and go. Yeah, it's rare. I mean, it could have its application. You're training for a powerlifting competition, and sometimes you have your sets of six and five and four and three and two and one stuff like that. But when you're training, just get to training, get to moving. Lots of movement. Um, don't allow anything to sidetrack you. Don't allow anything to slow you down. Stay on point, stay on plan, and uh, make it fun. You know, be a little kid about it. Like, you know, challenge yourself. You're doing pull-ups and you hit a set of uh, 
six reps and then you go to do another set a few minutes later and you're not feeling it for the day what would a little kid do a little kid would say i wonder if i can first of all they'd be like because they're short right they'd be like i wonder if i could jump up there they'd try to jump up there right the second thing they would do is i wonder how many times i can pull myself up and they would just do as many as they can you feel yourself in a rut go for it grab a really really modest or lightweight i know a pull up sometimes challenging for some some people but grab grab light dumbbells grab fives grab tens and say you know what let's do 100 of these you get to like 20 25 and you're like this is burning i don't know if i'll make it to 30. you get to 30 and all of a sudden this giant tidal wave of emotions start to hit you and you're like fuck this you're like fuck yeah i can do this and you get fired up and you get excited that momentum will carry you through the rest of your workout. It will power you for like another hour right through the workout. That's something you're good at, Mark, is you, you know, like, I think where people are at and how much you can push them. When we were doing right. the leg press the other day, we did like a few sets of 10, I worked up to like five plates, and then I said, screw it, on the last one I'll go up to six, and then I'm like, all right, we're going to do three sets of 10. Right. And I was like, oh, I regret going up to six. Yeah, you went from 10 reps to 30 reps. And, but I was able to get it. Like, you just have a, and it's not like I wasn't pushing before. Right. Nice. Yeah, I think we all have a lot more within us than we think, you know? Whew. I'm grabbing the middle of this thing like this and pressing them up, it's actually pretty challenging. It's only 20 pounds. But it's killing me. And this arm is just weird. Shoulder, tricep, elbow. It's all jacked up. <sighs> Try to keep the core tight on these. You might even be able to get some obliques and some riblets in there. Sometimes you shoot this other arm out just for balance. Wow, that's way harder than I thought it would be. My left side is the side that's a little weaker, so I usually try, more recently especially, I've been working on starting on the weaker side first. See if I can get the exercise done on the side that's weak before I run out of steam. Gonna let this set rock back into the wrist. I'm gonna press from here. Kind of corkscrew them. Yep. I like this because it's hitting some mobility up too a little bit. side has a clean bill of health so this side's a lot easier where I really need to push the weight which is like about here it's easy for me to flex this side on the other side it's a lot tougher Gates. This is hard. This is called a bottom up press. And it requires a good grip. A lot of you people watching that are young, this will be no problem for you, but I'm past my prime. Cut me some slack. I've seen a guy do that with a 106, <laughs> 106 pound kettlebell. Or maybe it was 97. I take it back. 
was one of those real big doggers. That cobra this morning has to stick to it. Nice. You felt it? God damn. Do some swings while you're doing that. We're gonna do a little burnout here on this uh, machine. Doing uh, some machine shoulder presses. Shoulder McShoulder Ruskies. Shoulder McShoulderton's. It's gonna go in here with this grip. Just because a lot of times everything else is that way. We go light. We'll start with some of that on there. So I'm just gonna do like a reasonable, about, reasonable amount of reps. Just anything above like five reps would be good. And I'm not gonna do nine billion reps, uh, but anything more than five reps would be good. And I'm gonna find a range of motion within the first couple reps uh, that I feel the most on my shoulders. I'm gonna ride that out. Then we're gonna put the weight down and we're gonna switch the cam and we're gonna do the same thing. I'll ride the weight out again, switch the cam one more time, that'll be it. So main thing is find the tension point. Find, find what feels like it's working, the area that you want to work. From here to here, there's really not much activation going on. So I probably don't need to worry about that part of the exercise. So as I go through it, I start to see what feels good. Right about there feels really good. We're gonna do 10 reps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll hold this one. Nice, come on. Hold it halfway here. Good, switch it out. Good. Don't want to completely kill yourself because you gotta have more for each one that you do. So here we go. Again, find a good tension point. Right here feels good. Remember, it's shoulders, not triceps. Ten reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Woo! Hey, people's coach, why aren't you using full range of motion? This is a full range of motion. This is a full range of motion. This is the most amount of range of motion that I need on this exercise for me to feel it the right way. That's what we're after. Feels heavy. So we're gonna bump these little plates off. I don't need it to be heavy. I need it to feel good is what I need. Oh yeah, I can go higher with this one. Right in here. Stay off the triceps. Stay on the shoulders. No tension off. Stay with it. You're going to lower the weight a little bit. Stay 
stay on that tension. Stay on that tension. Resist, big shoulders. Big, wide, thick, veiny shoulders. Huh? What? All right, so you go, Mark. Fast ones. Yep, come on. This is it. Going until you can't go no more. Come on. I'm good, I'm good. Yep. Yep. Come on. This is it, last set. We're gonna put 20. I'm just gonna random, yell out a random number, okay? Got 20 reps to go. Two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. ten. We got ten more to go. It's really painful, but there's a greater pain, and it's called complacency. You don't want to be the same as you were yesterday. Why not improve a little bit? You got to go through this life anyway. And there's a lot of shit in life that just sucks and hurts anyhow. So why not put yourself through a little more pain so you can get a little bit more results and get ahead of everybody else. Live your life from out in front. A couple more reps. Why not explore everything there is to explore? Why not be as healthy and as wealthy and as kick-ass as you can be? Hashtag be rich. There we have it. I heard a great quote today from 50 Cent. I never caught it before either. It's in an old song. Comments below, let me know what song this is. God's a seamstress. He tailor fitted my pain. I was like, damn, 50. What's going on with that, son? That's what you want. You want to be tailor fitted for some of the pain that you're going to face in life. And that's what we're doing in here. Training ourselves harder. We're training our mindset. You're not training your shoulders. You're training what's in between your ears. Do you feel like you're a pussy? Do you feel like you're an underdog? Do you feel like you're overlooked? Feel underappreciated? Give people a reason to appreciate you. Turn yourself into something. Here's an opportunity to do it. You can get to the opportunity every day to do it through your fitness and through your nutrition. So go out there and get that shit done. Great shoulder workout. Always awesome to train with my boy Tom. Get after it. And when you do get after it, when you get an opportunity to get in the gym and to have a good workout, give it the proper attention and intensity that you need. Remember what I said in the beginning of this workout. If you're not feeling it, grab something really, really light and do a crazy amount of reps. Tell yourself, I'm going to do 75 reps of this. No matter what. It doesn't matter if it takes you eight sets to get to 75 reps. Just do it. It could be the bar. It could be five pounds, five pound uh, plate plate raises, hundred reps. Just fucking, you'll be you'll be surprised on what that does for your brain. It's gonna fire a lot of shit off. You're gonna feel proud of yourself. You're gonna feel excited about the workout, and you're gonna be off to the races. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.